Oh, I don't, I have too much money. How can I ruin this? <laughs> Celebrities, do they know how to cook? I don't know if we know that yet. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they catch me by surprise. Today I wanted to throw in some celebrity chefs, kind of like mix it up. If you're new here, welcome. Also, if you're not new here, welcome back. I have a full playlist of other celebrity recipes in case you're interested. We even did one that was like just full cookies. Like we've gone all over the place. But we're gonna actually start over at the stove because we're gonna start with the iconic Thomas Keller. If you don't know, he's an American chef. He owns a bunch of Michelin star rated restaurants. He is very well known. He was actually, um, I think he was hired by the people who made Ratatouille to like make the whole, I don't know, restaurant atmosphere very like restaurant-y. So he had a lot of influence there, which I think is really cool. But apparently he makes an incredible scrambled egg and it's a very creamy, soft scramble kind of an egg, which is kind of egg I like. So I figured we could try it because he does a bunch of like techniques and things that I have never tried with scrambled egg. We're gonna start with our eggs. I have four eggs right here. I also have salt. You gotta salt the eggs at the beginning. Then he whisks it, but then he takes it a step further, or I guess he suggests if you want further refinement, to your scrambled eggs. And I'm like, well, I've never tried this before. So um, after we whisk it, we're gonna blend it. Oh my gosh, this may be my opportunity to use <gasps> my mini whisk. You wanna be gentle, gentle with your eggs, he says. Very delicato. So now that it's whisked, now we're gonna do the thing that I've never tried before, and that is blend it. I gotta blend it back, everyone. New cup, but same heart and soul. <laughs> Doesn't say for how long, but I assume not that long. <gasps> no, leaking. Can't figure it out. That's awesome. This is just leaking, just leaking everywhere. So I guess into the big blender you go. Awesome, cool, what a way to start a video. Let's try this again. Let's blend. I think that's enough? It's probably enough. Then he says to pass it through a sieve. Thomas Keller does not mess around when it comes to eggs. Actually, honestly, if you were going through making like a ton of eggs for people, I feel like putting it in the blender would be the fastest way to whisk it. But for like a single egg, no. Okay, let's go over to the stove. Heat is on low. Then we're gonna add in the most amount of butter I've ever seen. Now remember, four eggs, four eggs, this much butter. Put that in, very carefully kind of break that up a bit because we don't want this fully melted because now we're gonna add in the eggs slowly and continuously whisking to emulsify the butter into the egg mixture. And he wants me to do this until this resembles porridge. So here we are now, and the um, curdles are starting to pull away from the side. I have been here forever. When it starts to resemble porridge, turn off the heat. Look for small curdles beginning to pull away from the bottom of the sides of the side. Like that is what's happening right now. You want me to turn off the heat now? Like that doesn't look done. Like I'm all for like a soft scramble, but this, this feels aggressive. Okay, I started in some creme fraiche and a little bit of um, parsley and some more butter. And uh, I think that, I think that's good to go now. Let's let's go taste test. Now I don't have any brioche bread, but I do have bagel from last week's video. So I'm gonna do that. They're very creamy. Wow, that is rich. I mean, it's very good. It is a lot of work. I like the idea of honestly, like the straining it and the blending it. I think it made it like really creamy and stuff. I can't stop eating that. Oh my God, this is so good. Mmm, mmm, mm-hmm. There's so much butter in this. That's why it tastes so good. But while I enjoy this, you know what this needs? This needs a coffee. And not just any coffee. This is the coffee from the woman who started the blonde salad, which is a blog. And then she pivoted it to like this gigantic business. And she partnered with Nespresso and made her own like signature coffee. So Chiara made this like cotton candy, coconut milk, like really pretty drink. And I just want to show you, this is what was written on the website, okay? Very different than how she actually made her coffee in like her video. First of all, her her coffee is spelled incorrectly with an N instead of an L. It has coconut water, but she only used coconut milk. And then it talks about using a barista device, which I didn't even know existed, but she just uses her coffee maker. So I don't know what was happening here. Anyway, thought we'd make it. Christopher, do you wanna try these, these eggs? Do I? If you like buttery eggs. I hope I did them okay. They took forever. Not really the way I like eggs. No? They're very custardy. They're very custardy. They're very creamy. That's what he does, like a French soft 
scramble. It's well done. I don't think I've ever said this before, but it's a little salty. <laughs> Honestly, it really is. It's very aggressive. Anyway, okay, so the coffee. Now she used pink sugar and coconut milk. I don't have pink sugar. I could not find pink sugar. So what I did is I took simple syrup and I mixed it with a little bit of pink food coloring to like, you know, go with the whole ambiance. And also because I just don't think that the sugar would blend very seamlessly with a cold milk. I don't know. Pour that in there. Give that a little stir. Don't tell me that's not adorable because it is. Now for the brew, she used basically, it's like a 40 mil espresso basically. So I'm gonna do that. Cause I do have an espresso one, not, not hers, unfortunately. Couldn't get it here. So by the way, I am brewing two ice cubes in the cup and then doing the espresso. Then we're going to shake it like a Polaroid picture. We're gonna put more ice in here. And apparently this is gonna change the flavor of the coffee. Like they were talking about it in the video and how it is gonna develop differently. So I'm very curious. So now we're going to pour it into a little, look at my little mini shaker. Isn't she cute? We're gonna shake. So cold on my hands. It's gonna go into this glass but she had it all like layered and stuff. So I'm gonna see if it actually does the whole layer thing. So she adds some ice to this glass first. Ooh, and I'm gonna move my camera so that we can actually, you know, see the layers, feel the layers, be one with the layers. Now we're gonna pour in the coconut milk. Give this one more shake for good luck. Here we go, grand reveal. Is it gonna give me the layered look that it shows in the photo, though not in the video? Looks like some, <laughs> some editing. <laughs> I could be wrong though. Okay, kind of, yeah. And then she does, well in the video she just opted to just do marshmallows on top, but she had cotton candy, so I figured we should probably do that. And I'm gonna make it artful. I need to fit it in the glass. I'm sure there's like an easier way to do this, but right now I'm just having fun doing some artful arrangements. I don't know what you're supposed to do once you have this in. Is this just for show? Do you like mix it in? It feels like a lot of sugar. Here we go, everyone. Here's my artful arrangement. You ready? Ta-da! Look at me go. I hope everyone enjoyed my, my artful arrangement. <laughs> the top looks a little bit yikes, but we're gonna move past it. Does this make it look better? Does it make it look more cotton candy-y? I'm gonna drink this without the cotton candy, but I just wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. I mean, credit where credit is due. It did separate into the labors, and I did not think that was gonna happen. I would like some lessons on um, proper cotton candy uh, arranging though. Okay, well now we need to stir it in and properly taste it. Cause she went right in without stirring it. Just like kind of defeats the purpose, you know? All right, what's up with this? Honestly, I like that. It's very, um, it's very smooth. Honestly, I, I don't think I've ever had a, a coffee with coconut milk before. It's really good. I really like that. <laughs> it definitely doesn't need the cotton candy. I mean, unless you made it with coconut milk and didn't make it sweet, then maybe you would need some of this to like add some flavor or something, but like it doesn't need it. I gotta give you credit, girl. This is very tasty. However, I would like some tips on how to not make the um, coconut milk chunky when it gets like mixed in and cold. I don't know, it just, it's starting to solidify. Is that just normal? Is that just something that you deal with? I don't know. Oh yeah, that's good. Big fan. All right, now while water boils in the background, for another recipe, we'll get to that in a minute. But first I need to take you to uh, Yesterday Rachel, where I filmed an entire recipe before today. Hey, what's up? Last week's video. Since I'm filming this, this video that you're watching tomorrow, I figured today we need to make the overnight oats part so that it can sit overnight. <laughs> so future Rachel can taste test. You're welcome. We're gonna make Gordon Ramsay's overnight oats. He posted this on Instagram and it looked really interesting and a lot of people were re recreating it. So I wanted to do it as well. And we are gonna start by roasting some stuff. Now, for those of you that don't know, I am allergic to nuts. So this is gonna be like a scaled back version, but like obviously he used a lot of different like nuts in his, but I can't do that, all right? So for those of you that are nut free or have children with nut allergies, I'm gonna let you know if this is worth it. So he didn't give a lot of direction in terms of like temperatures or anything like that, but he started by roasting some oats as well as nuts and seeds and things like that. So um, that that's what we're gonna do. I have no idea what I'm doing with this. Well, I guess that's not a good spot for it. This is the best containers, by the way. If you need like some good sealing um, 
products. I will link them in my uh, uh, Amazon storefront in case you're interested. They are amazing. So again, he didn't really give a lot of instruction. So I'm going to put some oats here. I have the um, oven heating to 350. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I have um, sunflower seeds that are pre-roasted, but I have unroasted pumpkin seeds. So I'm gonna put those on. I'm assuming the ratio needs to be like heavily oats, right? I'd rather do too many than have to do this again. Unless it's really good, in which case I'm gonna be doing it all the time. All right, here we go. Raw pumpkin seeds. Okay, and having looked it up, these will cook for very different um, amounts of time. So these only need like 10 minutes in the oven. Pumpkin seeds are gonna take a lot longer. So I'm gonna put them on a separate sheet. I was gonna bake them at the same time, like together. Glad I checked. My guess is I don't need a ton. Oh, I should probably coat these in oil first, shouldn't I? Try that again. And salt. All right, now into the oven these go. Be delicious. So while those are toasting the oven, we're gonna make this, um, not really a sauce, but something to help adhere the granola together a little bit. Make it granola-y. And again, he doesn't have any measurements, so I'm just eyeballing it. <laughs> Starting with butter. I'm doing this at like medium low heat, by the way, in case you're interested. Okay, and then we're gonna add in some maple syrup and some salt. And then we want this to come together like a little, like a little sauce, <laughs> a little granola sauce. Not gonna lie to you, that smells incredible. Okay, we have the oats, they're done toasting. They look nice and toasty, I like it. And then for the uh, pumpkin seeds, I couldn't find any like actual chunks of um, coconut. So instead I'm using unsweetened coconut and I kind of threw it in right at the end of the seeds. So it gave it like a little bit of like a toastiness, you know, looks really good. So again, he seems to measure with his heart, so I'm gonna do that too. And he added in a lot of like dried fruit and stuff like that. So I have this as like a cranberry, cherries, blueberries, golden berries, I don't even know what that is, and goji berries. A bunch of that. I also have my roasted sunflower seeds, a bunch of those, and then the oats. To me, that feels like a good mix. Okay, now um, the the syrup mixture. I have it like that. It came to like a nice, thick consistency. He didn't give measurements, so I'm, I'm gonna guess. Oh, it smells so good with the oats, wow. I feel like it needs a little bit more. Probably turning this into dessert. Okay, that looks nice and granola-y. So now we need to make our overnight oats. And where I'm going to move the camera. Cause now we're gonna put it all together. So he had, oh, that's, that's a lid right, so I should probably take that off. So he filled it about halfway with a mixture of milk, dollop of yogurt, maybe a little bit more yogurt, there we go. This is where he used like a, a nut butter, so obviously I can't do that. So I borrowed some of my parents' sun butter because they have sun butter at their house, so. Thanks, mom and dad. I'm gonna mix that all together. This feels like too much, I'm just gonna, empty some of it. I'm sure there's like not really a science to this, it's just sort of like practice makes perfect, but I haven't made this before, so I want it to be as good as it can be. That's about half, all right. Okay, that feels better. And now we're gonna put in the oat mixture. I don't know, that feels good, I think. Give that a little stir, ta-da! All right, now I'm gonna seal this up and Future Rachel can see what's inside. Good luck, future Rachel, I hope it's good. <laughs> Thank you, past Rachel, I really hope it's good too. So I have it right here. It has been sitting overnight. It doesn't look appetizing, I'm gonna be real honest, but who's to say? What they do now is they put in um, some berries. I also, I forgot to put in like, um, I got freeze dried banana and strawberry. I thought that might be interesting from a, like a flavor perspective, but it might be interesting like crunch wise. I don't know, maybe it's terrible. We're here to experiment. I have some berries. They put in some on the side here. A little bit of some blueberries. And then we'll add some freeze dried for texture. Okay, again, this doesn't look appetizing, but I, I trust you, Gordon. Here we go. I'm trying to decide how I feel about it. So first of all, freeze dried, this tastes awesome. Purely a taste perfective. It tastes really good. And the oats are hydrated, but not as um, soggy as I was expecting. Honestly, it's not bad. It tastes very healthy, which I guess is kind of the point. It is quite healthy. And I'd have to like pivot my brain because it tastes like oatmeal, but it's cold. 
And so my brain just like immediately is like, oatmeal's hot, so this is not as good as it should, you know what I mean? Does anyone else brain need that? The flavors honestly are all like well balanced, like the yogurt to milk to um, nut butter is like a good ratio. Fruit's great, the um, seeds add a nice flavor to kind of break it up. I don't know if I'd go out of my way to make that, but it's not bad. It really isn't bad. If you're looking for a healthier option, that is definitely edible. <laughs> it makes it sound so terrible. Honestly, it's quite good. It's just that there's a lot of work that it goes into it. But like from my flavor standpoint, from like an easy breakfast, like next morning standpoint, if you're already pre-making like lunches to take to work and stuff like that, like I can see myself sitting at a desk and, and just noshing on this whilst looking at emails. I can see myself doing that. Fast Rachel, we did it. Was not as bad as we expected it to be. <laughs> so now you can see behind me that um, my water is now boiling because now we're gonna make another Bella Hadid recipe. This is something that she's been, she's been sharing more recipes and I tested her last one and it was really good. So this is a pasta recipe, hence why we are boiling water. So for this, we need to go back over to the stove. All right, so the pan's getting nice and hot and we are gonna start with uh, garlic and the girl loves garlic, which I approve. So we're gonna add some olive oil. And she does the garlic two different ways, which I found really interesting. She did slices, but she also chopped. So I'm gonna do them separately. Like I'm gonna do the, um, the sliced first and then add in the diced. Ooh, garlic, stay in the pan. No, getting nice and fragrant. Let's take this off the heat for a hot minute. I'm also saving a bunch of the pasta water, by the way. I like to use it when thickening sauces. I don't know if she did that, but I'm gonna do that. And add a little bit more oil and she also added some chili flakes at this point. And now I'm going to add in some prosciutto and we're gonna cook this until it's crispy. All right, this is looking good. Add in our basil, I'm gonna add in our noodles and add in some pasta water. Some Parmesan. I'm gonna let this thicken up a bit. I think I might add in some more olive oil too to make it a little bit more like, I don't know, saucy. Maybe some more parm, I don't know. Feels like it's missing something. Smells good though, so that's good. All right, I grabbed a small thing of it because Chris is on a call right now, but I want his um, thoughts before I actually played all of this. Let's see what it needs. Mm, I want some like fresh basil in here. And then a little bit more heat. Let's try that. Super garlicky, a little spicy. Like I like the saltiness of the prosciutto with the freshness of the basil and then the spiciness of the red pepper. I think that makes like a nice little trifecta there. Might need a little bit more cheese. Let's see what Chris thinks. Christopher, I have some pasta for you. I love when you say that. This is just a sample. Let's see if you like it. I added uh, a little bit more of the, um, I'm gonna say red hot chili peppers. Give it away now. And then a little bit of fresh basil as well. Myself personally as a person, like try it. No. <laughs> no. I want it done the right way. <laughs> I think it was good this way. I did like rips of it, but I'm gonna be fancy for you. I think, I could be wrong, but I think rips are the right way to do it. Well, that will be not unfancy <laughs> for you then. Correct me on that if I'm wrong. <laughs> I think you're supposed to rip basil ideally. I generally cut it too, cause it's, you know, quicker. I also have another thing you're gonna taste test. And then I have another thing that I, is a drink though. All right. You're absolutely right about the chili flakes. Those are really, really nice in that. Mm -hmm. A lot of really good flavors here. Overall, I like it a lot. I would say this is really umami heavy, like glutamate forward. I would really love to try a bit of lemon zest. A little bit of lemon zest would go a long way on this. Mm -hmm. Very salty, very umami. It's, yeah. it's a lot. The right? spicy with the fresh basil with the pers <laughs> prosecco, <laughs> with the prosciutto. Yeah is very nice, but like, yeah, I felt like it was missing something and I was like, I can't figure out what it is. So maybe it's lemon. Honestly, the best thing on here is the garlic. You cooked the garlic perfectly. This is really, really good. Uh, it's a lot of garlic. Mm -hmm. That That's what makes it great. My girl Bella knows. This is really, really good. I like this a lot, um, but yeah, I think it needs a bit of balance, but otherwise, I mean, it's it's right there. Absolutely no extra salt needed. <laughs> no pa, I didn't even add any. Wait, 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 I have another thing you have to try. And I'm not even letting you finish that. This is this, well, obviously, this is the this is the overnight oats. Remember the oh, overnight yeah, yeah. The, yeah. yesterday? I'm Plant. curious what you think of that. Now this is cold. Yep. I had to prepare myself mentally for the swap. <laughs> Are you an overnight oats kind of a person? I don't know that I ever would have said that I am. Ooh, that's what I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add, hold on, fresh freeze-dried berries on top and bananas. 
does that and anything. Also, obviously it's missing like nuts and stuff, which I guess is like, you know, a pillar of granola. I like this a surprising amount. It's a lot better than I was expecting in the way that it looks. I was like, this isn't gonna be good, but the yogurt to milk to nut butter ratio is like spot on. I would really like this if it had peanut butter in it. <laughs> and I would really like this if it had like cashews and <laughs> almonds and stuff. This would be incredible. But even as is, this is quite tasty. I wouldn't go out of my way to make it more just because it is a lot of work. There's mm. so much that goes into this. Unless I was doing like a really big batch. Like if everyone in our family really liked this, then yeah, I'm gonna go through the effort of making like a giant vat of it. It would be like an easy breakfast next morning, you know? Those freeze dried fruits really play well. It really does, but like added fresh. Mm -hmm. Just that little like- Textural element, a yeah. crunch to it. Yeah, but really it's, which is different than the, the seeds and stuff. Okay, so the next um, drink. Why can't I finish anything? You can also eat this whilst I explain. This is Tom Hanks, I guess. He makes this. It's a mixture of Diet Coke and champagne, which the internet is calling Diet Cocaine. Why are rich people so stupid? <laughs> it feels like a, a bit much for champagne, which is why we, we don't we don't actually own champagne, but we do a Prosecco. I, mean, I buy champagne like once every five to 10 years and Tom Hanks is out here putting it in Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I have too much money. I, can I ruin this? <laughs> okay, so, so he does Diet Coke, and that's what the people of the internet are testing. We aren't big like Diet Coke people, so I figured we could do some with Diet Coke and maybe some with regular Coke and just see, cause I don't know if the aspartame is just gonna, or what, I don't know what they make it with now, but like, you know? The less of a perfectly good bottle of Prosecco we can waste, the better. <laughs> Obviously. Go and do a little bit. I don't think oh. we have any flutes. I was just gonna say, I was, I was gonna grab uh, wine glasses, but with the Coke in it, I don't know, that feels weird. There's no right glass to drink <laughs> Coke with Prosecco. <laughs> You have a Yahtzee dice tumbler? Okay, well. Sure. We could be fancy, I guess. Ugh, scared me. <laughs> I knew that was coming in yet. Okay, so do you wanna put some in each? No, I don't. Just a bit, just a bit. Like that, 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 we don't need more than that. So it should be like half and half. That's so wrong. <laughs> Regular diet, taste and switch. We must. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. That just tastes like champagne. I would have said it just tastes like watered down Coke. Yours tastes more Cokey. Mine's more champs forward. Neither are good. Mm -hmm. That one is better than this one. This one tastes too much like Coke. It's too um, sugar forward. This one isn't as sugar forward. I just don't understand why you would do it. Like it's, it's so close to what Prosecco would taste like a little sweeter, I guess. But it's indescribable. I would so much rather put, remember when we did um, the grapefruit? Those grapefruit mimosas were excellent. That was really good. Yep. Like do that. Yeah. That's unbelievable, like so much better, but I'm sorry, Tom Hanks. I'm not sorry, be better. <laughs> you have a responsibility. <laughs> Why are you guys so bad at Tom Hanks? Just, I'm so tired. But you like Ramsey's overnight oats and Bella Hadid's <clears throat> pasta, so. Those are both good. They were both good. Yep. And then uh, Keller. I realized actually in making the pasta, the reason why the eggs were too salty, I didn't use unsalted butter. That was my downfall. With the amount of salt I added plus salted butter and how, there was three and a half tablespoons of butter for four eggs. Three and a half, that's so butter. much butter, so much butter. So I think that was probably it. I think if I use unsalted, it would probably make it better, but I didn't think that far through. I actually like the one with more Coke more, but neither are good. Neither are good. How about I make you some more pasta? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm so Thank sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank oh, you for taste more. testing, yes. Ooh. Well, of course there's more. Thank you very much for your help. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> Take that Coke too. <laughs> yeah. Move this out of the way. I don't want to look at this anymore. Those were some surprising recipes, I have to say. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite or if you've made any or if you've seen any celebrity recipes that we should try out next. Leave them down below. And check out the full playlist. I will put the... I'll put it over here, I think. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already for new videos here every Saturday, and I will see you guys all next week.